Hi guys, welcome back to my mind. It's Danielle. Um, I appreciate you coming back and I do apologize for not recording every two days like I said. Um, this last recording or coming into this recording right now has been the hardest for me to reflect on and for me to truly remember to be honest because so that's why I've I've taken so long. I started a recording and then I stopped and then I I was like I I need to really dig deep here and figure out what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um I actually I actually asked a friend and my mom like what they remember from this time period because going into college from about age 25 I, it would, those were honestly the most tough years for me. So from like 18 to 25, I suppressed so much of my OCD that I hurt other people. I, I just, I wasn't aware. I didn't have the capacity to be aware. Um, it's, it, it upsets me thinking about it because it's like a block in memory from those times. And all I know is that I was so sad and I was so depressed and I was so embarrassed and I was so ashamed of who I was and what I had in my head. I didn't want to live like that. I didn't want to live with like demons I felt like in my head. And, and so that's why it's just hard to even recall because it was so negative inside of my head from about age 18 to 25. And at 25 is when I finally found a couple of really strong therapists. Um, and then it wasn't until just like two years ago that I actually went through a full treatment program. And since then, it's only gone uphill. So I think that's why I couldn't record a video right away because I was thinking like, okay, I went into college and that's when things went downhill, but why? And like, I remember not getting along with my roommate in college. And this is the friend I asked, actually, I've known her since we were one years old and we started rooming together um, freshman year of college. Um, we didn't get along. I know she, she she told me she never asked me about my OCD. I would always just say I have OCD and it's just, I'm, I would just kind of like brush it off like that. It's because I have OCD and I, did, I didn't want to talk about it, but I didn't even know what to talk about. But I know that when she wasn't in the room, I was constantly doing rituals. I was constantly trying to save the people I love. I was constantly feared by death thoughts. And that's like the, the my OCD was constantly surrounded by people I love or when I say surrounded by I mean it was emphasized on people I love dying and that that was what I obsessed over um, and I, I say the word obsessed over and I, I feel like sometimes I use the word obsessed like now like I'm obsessed with that movie it's so good and obsession isn't always a bad thing but for a person with OCD an obsession is something so strong, so fearful, that it's so real in your head that if if it doesn't change, it's gonna come true. And so that's why when I use the word obsessed, so I obsessed over people dying, it wasn't like I was happy about it. It was just always in my head and thoughts would never leave my head of my loved ones dying and and it was just so scary to me um and i would always try to question it i would always try to figure out like maybe this is supposed to be and that's what ocd does to you it makes you it makes you like wonder why am i thinking like this am i crazy are the people i love for me are the people i love supposed to die for someone else they could have an obsession over running over their cat in the street and they could literally lose their mind and think like am i supposed to run over my cat is this what like is this what my life is meant to be like for me i'm very i'm spiritual and i'm very 
into like the universe and that kind of stuff. I'm not like ultra religious or anything, but I, I, that's what, okay. So that's what str I struggled with is because I always was conflicted whether this is who I am, an OCD person, and this is who I am as a regular person. And I never had the ability or capacity to realize that's the same person. And so, dang, even saying that, like, is just, it's just cool. It, it like, gives me the chills a little because I always separated the two, like, OCD Danielle versus regular Danielle. And I never really accepted that I was Danielle with OCD. Um, and so I know I'm going on a tangent, but the last, from 18 to 25, I, I went to college. I, excuse me, I didn't do well in college at the beginning. Um, I was on academic suspension the first semester and truthfully, it wasn't from like partying all the time. I academically couldn't sustain the work and sustain all the things I had to deal with in my brain. I spent hours doing rituals. I spent so much time reading one book um, because I had to reread this page I don't know how many times before I could move on. I would never get any work done um, if I didn't reread the page then I was in control of my mom dying. Like those are the things that were so real in my head. Like it doesn't make any sense as me to me telling someone who doesn't have OCD and doesn't have these real extreme thoughts. But when you're in the moment of it, it it's it's exasperating. It's like it's like please just stop, but it won't go away. And then, and then you're like the learned behavior of your OCD just spirals. So, so that's what happened like in college when I would study, um, and I just sort of got by. Um, I remember my, I remember my sophomore year of college. I um, really wasn't able to handle it, and I tried to like just be social and like the Danielle that didn't remember OCD and have fun. And I did have good times. Like I suppressed it and had some great times in college. Don't get me wrong. Um, because there were some days where I just felt awesome and I didn't feel the need to have these thoughts, but that was, or I didn't have these thoughts, but that was because I was like smushing it. I literally was smushing OCD and I wasn't, I wasn't like taking care of the root of the problem. And, and so it would just come back. 